What's up guys? My name is Chris Langan and today we're going to take you through a pitch design here at Driveline Baseball. My name is Anthony Brady, Director of Sports Science, Driveline Baseball, playing alias Cliff Holmes, closer for the Seattle Studs, Sidearm Nation, We're going to design some pitches today. Mr. Brady, it's an absolute honor to have a hand in designing your pitches today. Thank you, Coach. So we're going to take you through a little bit of the lab, just uh, what it looks like, some of the things you can expect if you're coming here as an athlete, or if you're just curious what it looks like here at Driveline. Obviously, we've got a mound. This is basically our tunnel for throwing. Pretty standard, just a generic bullpen area. We've got Rapsodo down there, and then we've got a track man over there at the top. So some of the tools we have at our disposal, if you flip it over here, uh, we've got four monitors. The top left, we've got Rapsodo. Top right, we've got TrackMan. Main differences between these is the TrackMan's gonna give us the observed, or basically what actually happened with the movement, whereas Rapsodo's gonna give us the inferred axis, um, or the inferred movement. On this monitor, we've got a lot of our tools. So right here, we've got basically our grip key. We click in here. For athletes that are curious, uh, basically to change their grips, etc., we can show them what it looks like. And then we've also got logged usage, um, basically to keep track of KPIs. And then long term, we can see this grip on average does this to the pitcher's profile. We've also got our blob, which we'll should certainly reference here. Basically, we can input uh, velocity, pitch metric movement, um, and what this does is gives, give us an idea on the pitch quality of the pitch. A score of 100 is going to be big league average and anything that's like above that would be above average. So a score of 150 would mean that pitch is 50% above big league average, 75 would be about 25% below. So it gives the athlete kind of some immediate feedback just based off the pitch metrics, uh, how we'd expect it to play. Now, obviously the plate locations of the command aspect isn't involved in that, but that stuff takes a little bit, long to stable, a little bit longer to stabilize. Um, so for pitch quality, stuff quality, this is kind of our go-to for immediate feedback to the athlete. And then over here, we've got the Edgertronic. We'll obviously get this lined up, show us doing that. This is gonna show us high-speed camera that'll just show basically ball release. Again, get a little bit more feedback for the athletes, uh, just cause coaching and saying, hey, do this, that may not be as effective as just showing them exactly what it looks like on the camera. Before we start, we've gotta get your pitch grip. Go ahead, go to the uh, slider. Little spike, Johnson. The old uh, Lance and Polar script right there. Besky's gonna log that on the laptop right there. Um, and basically we're going to work off, what we're going to do is we're going to get like three to five pitches. Uh, he's going to basically get a baseline of three to five pitches and then we're going to start, if we want to at least, make some adjustments via queuing. We may go a little bit earlier than that since we know uh, Brady a little bit from his previous TrackMan history, but if this was your first time throwing, we'd get a baseline and then we'd start messing. And through our process logger, basically what we can do, we adjust scripts. Uh, and then it is logged so that we can then tell the athlete, hey, here was the difference when you applied this grip versus that grip. So go ahead with your slider. Just like, I want you to try to mimic as much as you can. You're like facing a hitter and it's a profile you're gonna throw in a game. This basically, we're just seeing some slurve components on the pitch. If you look at the induced vertical on TrackMan, it's about five uh, and the horizontal is about 16, VLO 76. So about 12 miles per hour off of his fastball. The thing that's interesting is his release height is pretty low. So for him to create top spin is quite frankly a little bit interesting and he may be like forcing some wrist flexion there. So we'll probably take a look at it on the edge of Tronic and see if we can't modify that to get a little bit more velocity and make the pitch basically go in one plane to be a sweeper. This is the one with a little bit more depth. So I released just a little bit, kind of tough to tell because again, like most of the movement was horizontal, but I released yeah. just a little bit in front of it like this. You basically yeah. want to almost have like that wrist be extended back like that when you throw it. Um, I would think basically when you throw this next one, think of like giving the catcher the bird uh, okay. or kind of like if you think of like a clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine, you're almost trying to like throw it at like a 1030, if that okay. makes sense. Kind of make the pitch go upward. I would think basically give the catcher the bird first. Keep, the, keep like the same grip and everything? Yeah, keep, keep the grip for now, because if, if you feel comfortable with it, I'd rather like we just modify the thought process okay. at release rather yeah. than take the grip away. Yeah. So like getting more uh, palm upwards? On yeah, the like that's, yeah, you're literally like swiping upward on it. You're yeah. trying to make, you're basically trying to make the ball drop as little as you can. Okay. That kind of makes sense? Yeah. Because yeah. you've, got, you've got the release side stays right there for yeah. it, you know what I mean? To start, let's just try taking the spike out. 
you want to try that first? Or? Well, I don't know, yeah. Uh, yeah let's, let's try the normal grip first. So go here? Yeah, you can put your uh, middle where you want, but I want you to put like a little bit more into the index finger. Okay. You can put it together if you want, but like that way we don't quit get quite as much pressure on that middle. And if the index and then both kind of stay on at the same time, it should keep it from getting in front. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? That way you're kind of almost like, relatively speaking, you're a little bit more behind it. If yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, and try I'm still that. trying. Yeah, you're yeah, just right. like middle finger at the catcher, yes. I don't think I've, I've only ever thrown a slider with my I, yeah. fingers apart. But I, I think uh, getting them apart might help you yeah. stay just a little bit behind it. You know what I mean? Relatively speaking, a little bit do more. You like, uh, do you shade right on top of the seams? Or do guys kind of like shift? Uh, guys will shift them. It, it kind of, some guys will go like even inside of them a little bit. Okay. So some guys, it, it just depends on comfort. Some guys will actually just put it on, they'll just stack it onto one yeah. seam too. Okay. I, yeah. I'll try it on top of the seams first and then maybe shift it inside. Okay. <laughs> uh, definitely the first time I've done that. And yeah, then that yeah, way, I'll try it on one seam, yeah. and now you can put a little bit more. You can be like 60 40 with finger, fingertip pressure on the middle. Let's yeah. see if that gets you the kind of profile we're, we're looking for is like 15 plus horizontal, and then just whatever vertical you can add. Nice. So, I literally felt like it just like. Like that looked like it rose. Right. Compared to all sliders right. like normally. Like this one is kind of just on. Like I'm not sure. quite fully together. There's right. a little bit of space, but this feels pretty good. Perfect. Great. So I mean, largely it was a grip modification, yeah. to be honest. That was kind of the thing that helped more than orientation. Nice. Nice. That's chill. I am nailing that <laughs> up and in. Once we switch to the uh, 2C orientation, Pretty much everything stayed above um, that like zero line. You know what I mean? You had a little bit, I mean, you dry rode some of them, but like, again, it's early on in the process. Had one cutter, but about 60% of them looked like they had, 60 to 70% had at least like that 10 inches of sweep. Uh, and pretty much all of them had positive, positive vertical. Yeah. So the guys who do throw that pitch that you just threw at the big league level, it performs well above the average big league break in terms of uh, just the raw stuff yeah. characteristics. So, kind of like that Sergio Romo, um, Ryan Thompson esque slider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Go ahead, go to that new slider. Chill, and then just hold it up here. Just throw 94. Yeah, that's. Yeah. That, that's I would say that's a good idea for all of your pitches. Then all of your pitches will be better too. <laughs> yeah. So, it's right. been a pleasure today, Mr. Holmes. Glad we got you a couple new grips. Thanks, Coach. Modified the arsenal a little bit. So, pleasure doing business. With Thanks, you. Coach. We'll go here and recover it.